Hello, I'm Eric Hanley, an automation specialist with the ESNE, and in this video segment, we will cover how to set up Rockwell's Armor Block IO Link Master in Studio 5000 and then add one IO Link sensor. Before we jump into our content, ESNE offers online training through YouTube. Please like and subscribe to the ESNE TV YouTube channel for how to applications and other automation content. To start our demonstration, we're going to add the IO Link Master into an existing Studio 5000 project. Once in the project, you will scroll down in the project organizer, then right click on the Ethernet module and select New Module. This is the same for adding any remote I.O. over Ethernet, but make sure that you do not select the backplane or the chassis. When the new window pops up, you can filter by typing in I.O.L., which will limit everything that you see to I.O. Link Masters with add-on profiles for your Studio 5000 project. Once you find the proper module, you highlight the device and click Create. This launches a new window where you will configure the IO Link Master. You start by giving it a name, which we will use IO Link, then assign the IP address, which is 192.168.1.111. Then, at the bottom of the module window, you see that there is a module definition area where you can assign the mode for each channel as well as the configuration of the module. We will select the change button to open up the module definition window and configure each of our ports as well as change the module keying. If you see that the channel has a drop down for each individual port to change it between IO link, digital input, digital output, disabled, and fallback. You can configure each port to be a different mode if you choose to which makes this module very flexible. We are going to disable all but port zero, since that is where our sensor is currently plugged in. This will eliminate any nuisance alarms for failed communications to devices that are not connected to any of those ports. And then we are going to change the keying to compatible module. This will verify that we have the same major revision, but it does not care about the minor revision differences. Now we can select OK and yes to the prompt stating that we are changing the module definition and verifying that we intend to make this change. Now, with the module set up, you can see all of your standard tabs with an addition of the new IO Link tab, which we will use to add our device. All other ports will be grayed out because we've only enabled channel zero. To add the sensor into channel zero, you need to click on the change button located in the far right side. This will launch a new pop-up where you select the IO Link device. It will already be populated with all the current Rockwell devices, but if you are missing a device, you can select the register IODD file button. The IODD file is basically an EDS file for an IO Link sensor. When you need to register the IODD file, it will be in an XML format that you need to get from the equipment manufacturer. After you register the IODD, it will then appear in this library. We are now going to add the 42JT sensor by selecting the appropriate folder and drilling down to the exact part number in which we have 42JT-D2LAT1-F4. That's our photoelectric sensor and once we've highlighted it, we will then click Create. Then we will want to change our keying just like we did for the module and change it from exact match to disabled. This will remove any errors for not having the exact sensor. It is all based on your preference if you would like to keep the keying so that you are notified if the sensors are not identical to the one that you have configured. Next, we will select what we want in our process data from the drop down, you can see there are various options that you have for the process data. This data comes across as a UDT in the controller tags for each data point, such as a trigger or signal strength. In our example, we will leave it as the default and then select OK and Yes to change the module definition again. 
With the sensor created, we then go back into our IO link tab, and then you can see the offline parameter configuration for the device. Each device will have its own parameter set and different configuration tabs. If you want to change the sensor configuration, you can set it all inside the project and download directly from the PLC through the master and into the sensor. This is all done without messaging, but if you have something that you want to change programmatically, then you can still set up messaging to do so. With the master created and the sensor added, you will now see the tags in the controller tags. The tags will start with the name you used for the master module. Then you will see separate tags created for each channel's process data values, as well as some pre-configured status and fault tags for each of the channels. Now we will need to download this configuration into the PLC and go online so that you can see the remaining features. We will open the IO link module, then select the IO link tab and open channel zero's sensor. You will now see live values for the configuration parameters as well as diagnostics. For example, from here, we can turn on the locating indicator LED. We will change it from the drop down menu and select apply. Then yes to confirm that we want to make the change to the sensor. When you apply the parameter changes to the PLC, the PLC stores the values in the IO link master. If you want the PLC to always override the device data, then you can enable automatic device configuration under the sensor setup in the column labeled data storage. This will enable the PLC to keep the parameter set as well as the IO link master. Now you have seen how to set up an armor block IO link master and add an IO link sensor. The process is simple for the amount of extra data that you get from your sensors. As always, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please contact your local ESNE account manager or automation specialist.